Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can host your Discord bots on DigitalOcean. This is how I personally host my Discord bots because I find it to be the most user-friendly. However, you do have to pay $5 a month in order to use their service, but the link in the pinned comments and a link in the description is a referral link, which will offer $100 in free credit, which must be used within six months. So you can go ahead and use that to try this out and get started. Worst case scenario, you just get six months of hosting for free. And real quick, before we start, if you do need help with anything, then feel free to ask within the Worn Off Keys Discord server. We have a bunch of people joining every day, as you can see here. Once you've joined, you can scroll down to the cloud channel and ask your questions within there. And if you do need help developing Discord bots, you can also ask within the JavaScript channel. So with that said, let's get started. You're going to want to create an account with DigitalOcean using the link in the pinned comment or in the description. This will give you $100 of credit that you must use within the first 60 days. After you've gone ahead and created an account, you should see a page similar to this one, where you have a create button here. If it looks different because it might change their user interface in the future, you essentially just want to try and find a way to create a droplet. A droplet is essentially going to be its own cloud server as the description specifies right here. So clicking on this will give us the configuration options we need to actually create this. So once you're here, you might be automatically selected to be on the $40 a month option. You don't want that. You just need the $5 a month option to make sure that you click here. Also, if you want to follow the exact tutorial and you want to select CentOS, this should automatically select the latest version, but make sure you are selected within the dropdown here. If you're familiar with Linux, then feel free to choose whatever operating system you want, but I'll be choosing CentOS for this tutorial. We can then scroll down and you want to select a region. Typically, this will be the closest to your location, but I'm going to select a New York server. And scrolling down further, we can then choose to use SSH keys or passwords. If you're familiar with Linux and SSH keys, then feel free to click on that. However, if you're new to Linux and you haven't really hosted something before, then we're going to keep things simple and just use a basic password. In the future, I'm going to be releasing a video on how to have the most basic standard security practices enabled within your Linux VPS. And so I'll be linking that at the top right of the screen now once that video is out. So if you are seeing that, feel free to check out that video afterwards. And that'll make your actual server that you're hosting your bot off of just a little bit more secure to make sure nothing bad happens. But make sure that you enter in a root password that is very secure. One thing I like doing is using a password generator such as LastPass or something similar to that. So here I'm using LastPass to generate a password. I'm going to be using a 50 character long password that has uppercase, lowercase numbers and symbols. So I can go ahead and click on the copy icon here and I can paste it right here. So now it's going to say that we pass all of the requirements. Scrolling down, we want to make sure we only have one droplet and we might want to name this because when we're in our digital ocean dashboard, we will see this. I'm going to just name mine discord bot tutorial. And I just realized you cannot have spaces. So I'll add in dashes instead. Of course, you can name yours, whatever you want. Scrolling down, you can enable backups for an extra dollar a month. That is up to you. I'm not going to be doing that within this video. Then we can go ahead and click on create droplet. Now at this stage, you should see a loading bar right here. We can go ahead and click on the name of your droplet right here. You'll then be sent to a page like this. So this is where we have a bunch of different options for our actual droplet. Don't worry about most of the stuff though. Most of it you won't need for this tutorial or for hosting a discord bot. And once your droplet is done, you should see a pop-up right here. We can go ahead and get rid of that. And now we're going to try and log into this using something called Bitvice, which is a software I've been using for years. It is a free software that will allow you to connect to different virtual servers and then access them through a command line. And again, if this is your first time using Linux, then don't worry, I'll walk you through everything you need to do in order to actually host your bot. So in order to get Bitvice, you can look in the link in the video description, or you can Google Bitvice, spelt like this, SSH download. You want to go ahead and click on the first link. And then we want to click on this Bitvice SSH client installer right here. And this should start the download. Go ahead and accept it. It's a standard installer. So like most software, you just click next a bunch of times and then it's installed. So now we can go ahead and open up Bitvice. And you should see a page similar to this one. There's a couple pieces of information we need, such as the host, the port, and the username. We'll also need the password here in a second. So let's start off by getting our host, which is the IP address of the machine that we just spun up. We can go back to DigitalOcean, and right here we see IPv4. Hovering over it makes this copy icon show up. We can click here to go ahead and copy this to our clipboard. We could then go back into here and we can paste in the host. 
in the port is always going to be 22 by default. This is how we actually connect to our machine. And so now we need a username, which by default is going to be root. And now we need a password as well. So under initial method, we can click here and select it to password. And then we have to make sure that we click right here to store the encrypted password in the profile. And then we can now enter our own password. So I've pasted mine in. We could then go and click on login. And we should get a prompt like this. We can then click on accept and save. And we now see these two things pop up where we have our terminal and we have this other window right here. So the terminal is where we're going to type in our commands to actually run our bot. And this other window is where we're going to actually upload our files and manage our files. So if you're new to Linux, you can type in ls, and this is going to list all of the files within the current folder that we are in. You can also type in pwd, and this is going to list the current directory where you are located. And currently we are inside of the root directory, which is where we are right here as well. So we can go ahead and make a new folder. And there's a few different ways to do this. We can right click and go to create folder, or within our terminal, we can do mkdir for make directory, and we can make a new folder I'll just call it bot. When I do this, I can go over to this right panel and I can click on refresh and we now see bot right here. We can then double click to navigate into that. And within our actual terminal here, if I do PWD again, we see that we are not inside of the bot directory. But if I do LS, we now see the bot directory in blue and we can navigate into there using the CD command, which stands for change directory. So CD bot, I can then do PWD and we now see that we are inside of the bot directory. And now here's where you want to actually upload your files. So I'm going to go ahead and upload these files right here. I can just simply select them and then drag them over and let go. And it's going to start uploading them. I can then run LS within the terminal and we should see our files right there. So now we're going to have to install Node.js version 12. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in a command. This is going to be something you can find in the video description right below the actual digital ocean link. We can go ahead and right click this to paste it in and then we can press enter. Now, after this, it's going to say run sudo yum install dash y node.js to install node.js version 12. We don't have to actually read any of this text, but we can just simply select all of this right here. And within the console, as soon as you let go of your mouse, it's going to automatically copy that. We can then right click to paste it in and then we can press enter. Now at this stage, we can run node dash v and we should see version 12.19. You might see a later version in your case, depending on when you're watching this video, but as long as you have version 12, you should be good to go. So let's go ahead and actually start up our bot. If I do LS, we see that we have this stuff here and we can just simply run node index.js. However, we get an error. And that's saying that the module discord JS cannot be found. That's because we didn't actually upload our node modules files. And if you did, that's fine, but if you didn't, because it might take a while, we can actually just simply install those by running npm install. It will then automatically look inside of your package JSON file to see what dependencies you need, and it will automatically install those. So if I do ls now, we now see a node modules folder. And if I refresh over here, we now see a node modules folder as well. So now I can run node index.js, and this will actually start up our bot. We then see the client is ready, which is the code we wrote in the first episode. However, now we have a problem because we can't actually do anything else in our terminal. And if we close it, it might actually close the program. And you can press control C to go ahead and stop this. But what we want to do now is we want to make sure that our program can be running behind the scenes without us having to actually keep our computer on because that's kind of the point of this entire thing. So the proper way in order to fix this problem of running our bot 24 seven without keeping our computer on, because of course, that's the whole point of this is to install something called PM2 which is an npm package. So we can do npm install pm2-g, and this is going to install this globally within the entire machine. So now at this stage, we can type in pm2, and we get this help menu here. This means that everything is installed successfully. There's only a couple commands we have to be aware of when using pm2, one of which is pm2 list. This is going to list all of the processes that are currently running, and at the moment there is none, but if there were processes running, which I'll show you how to do that in a second, you would then see them listed here within this table. So let's go ahead and start our bot. We can type PM2 start index.js. And now we can still type things within our terminal. And so we can actually close our terminal and it's not going to close the process, but we also see this new table here. If we type PM2 list, we're going to see the same table, 
And this is going to show us the ID, the name, the mode. I'm not sure what this is. It's a question mark at the moment. If it's online and your CPU and memory usage for this process. So how do you actually view the logs of this? Well, PM2 logs is something. And after you type PM2 logs, you can type in the ID. So if you had multiple things running here, such as a website, multiple Discord bots, whatever it might be, each of those is going to have its own unique ID. And so you can look at the logs for a specific process using the ID. In this case, the ID is zero. So I'm going to do PM2 logs zero. And here we see the last 15 lines with the client is ready. I can go ahead and press control C in order to cancel that. And what happens if you want to stop your bot or if you want to restart your bot? Well, we can do PM2 stop and then the ID. And then we see this table here where the status was stopped. We could do PM2 start and then the ID. And now we see online again. And if you want to restart it after uploading new files, you can do PM2 restart and then the ID. We then see online again. So at this stage, you should be able to close out of this. You can press X right here. You can press X right here. And you can even turn off your computer, whatever it is, because your bot is now actually being hosted on a Linux machine, which you are renting from DigitalOcean. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.